Hello, my name is Mike Watson. I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual and today I'm going to be telling you how to read MIDI and get all your external MIDI instruments set up with Ableton Live. I must apologize, I've got some weird bug on my computer which makes this stupid photo booth thing just stick around, so just ignore that for now. Okay, so let's jump right in. I've got a MIDI track open here. To get one, you just right click and go insert MIDI track or hit shift command T. Okay, now we need these two boxes. This box that says MIDI from and so forth, and then also this little mixer box over here. If you can't see them, move your mouse to the right, and on this right kind of pane here, you should have this little I.O. circle. It's probably grayed out if you can't see it. Just click it and highlight it, and you get that section. And further down, you've got an M. Make sure that's also highlighted to get your mixer section. In this MIDI box, you probably realize that this mixer looks different to my audio mixer over here, which actually has a fader. And the reason my MIDI doesn't have a fader is because I don't have an instrument loaded up yet, which means there is no sound to be heard, even if I route my MIDI controller to it. So always make sure you've got an instrument on your MIDI track. I'm just gonna choose a random one, drag it in here from my browser, and as soon as that's loaded up, I've got my fader. Okay, so you've got your MIDI from here, and you've got two drop down menus. The top one is where you choose which MIDI controller you're gonna get your data from. You might find yourself in a situation where you've got more than one connected. And in my case, I've kind of got more than one connected. I've got my computer keyboard, which I use as a MIDI controller, and that's literally just my QRT keyboard. And I've also got a Roland Digital Piano that I've connected here. If I leave it on all ends, then whether I play on my computer keyboard or whether I play on my actual keyboard down here, it's the same thing. You didn't hear anything now when I'm playing from my Roland keyboard, and that's because I'm playing in a, in a range that is outside of the actual instrument range. But I still wanted to show you this because as I'm hitting my keyboard, you can see that it is receiving a signal. So if you're struggling to connect your MIDI keyboard, but you're seeing a signal, that means at the very least the computer's picking up the signal, so your problem lies with the output. If you're not even seeing the signal here, make sure all your connections are set up to your computer but I'll get back to that shortly. So let me choose my computer keyboard so that it only ever registers my computer keyboard. And when I hit my Roland keyboard, it's not registering on this track. You can see that I'm hitting it because it's still being registered on this other MIDI track that has all inputs. So here you've got your channels. And if your signal type, so for instance, my computer keyboard offers subsections of channels, then I'll be available to choose the different ones over here. When you start using with samplers that have many different channel instances so that you can use the same virtual instrument and route it to many different channels, then that's when this becomes a bit more important, which I won't be talking about in this video. Okay, then we've got your monitoring tab over here. So typically this is set on auto, and what that means is that you can hear the playback of your MIDI keyboard. So if I'm playing on my computer keyboard and my monitor is set on auto, I can actually hear the notes that, I'm being, that are being played. If I set monitor on off, I won't be able to hear it at all. However, the signal is still going into the computer. And if I hit monitor in, then I'll also hear it. Okay, so what is the difference between monitor in and auto? Before I tell you that, I just need to explain to you what this little button over here is at the bottom. So this red button is my record arm button. And if I want to record something in Ableton Live, you need to make sure that that track is armed. If this button is not on and I try and record something, it's not going to work because Ableton has no idea what I'm trying to record. So to prepare it, you got to hit this. So when a track is armed and your monitoring is on auto, then you will be able to hear it. If your track is on auto and it's not armed, you won't hear anything. However, if monitoring is set on in, whether your track is armed or not, you will be able to hear it. The other difference between monitor auto and monitor in is that on monitor auto, when a clip is playing back from your MIDI track, you won't hear any monitoring. And if it's set on in, even while a clip is playing, you'll be able to hear that. Okay, so now we get to your audio two, and this is where it sends the final audio to. So here in MIDI, you have some kind of MIDI input, which is my computer keyboard. That gets sent to this instrument, which turns my MIDI signal data into audio. So it turns it into a sound. And from here, it needs to send the sound somewhere. And that's what this audio 2 is. So here it says master. And what that means is this master track over here. Typically, your audio gets sent to the master unless you're using a return track. So for instance, a reverb track or delay track. But even when you're sending it to one of these return tracks, these tracks would eventually send it to master. And master is where you hear all your final audio. And as you can see at the bottom of master, my master out are my two speakers here. I can also choose to only have it out one speaker. And number one is my left speaker. 
Number two is my rice speaker, but I would like to keep it stereo, so I've got both here. Now, if you have a different MIDI input, for instance, my Roland digital piano, I was really lucky. I plugged it in, all the drivers automatically sorted themselves out and it popped up here. But sometimes you aren't that fortunate and you need to actually install the drivers yourself. Always make sure that your driver is up to date. And another important thing to do is hit command comma and go to your preferences. Another way to get here is to go to live preferences. Go to this audio tab on the left and make sure your audio settings here are correct. So under audio device, you can choose your driver type, your audio input device, your audio output device, and your channel configurations. Typically, these top three are the ones that are really important. Make sure you're using the right sound card. So I'm just using the sound card that's in my laptop. So if you have a different sound card here and your MIDI controller is connected to that, then obviously you need to have that sound card connected here so it gets your MIDI data. And for your audio input device, this is actually more for say a microphone or if you've got a guitar input and this wouldn't really help you with your MIDI controller. This would be more for if you're recording vocals or a guitar. And to do that, you need to set up an audio track and not a MIDI track. So I do have a video about that, which I'll link you to now. And your audio output device would be your speakers. If you still don't have your MIDI controller in this drop down list, then try hitting configure. This will open up your MIDI preferences where you can see all your different MIDI control surfaces, the inputs and outputs, and see what's actually being connected to a port. So, so hopefully your MIDI controller is here somewhere. If not, click on this drop down box and actually choose one from this list. And if you can't find it from this list, choose something that's as close to it as possible. So for instance, if you've got one uh, like a launch key, but not one of these ones, just choose one and um, under input, you should be able to see your device connected accordingly. If you want to learn everything there is to learn about Ableton Live, feel free to subscribe and follow along. I'm going through the whole entire Ableton Live manual and making videos on all of those things. Have fun making music!